Executive Functioning, Planning. Planning is the ability to figure out how to accomplish a goal. It includes visualizing the end result, outlining the steps to complete a task, and identifying needed resources or materials. In this video, you will learn about the key components of planning and practical examples related to school. Requirements for planning. The first thing we need to think about in terms of planning is that 90% of good planning takes place in a different location than where the task will be carried out. This means that we need to visualize the task prior to initiating it. To do this, we will need to use what we call the mental movie screen. The mental movie screen includes the images we create in our minds when we read or listen to a story, daydream, or think about the future. And just like a movie screen, these aren't simply static images. These visualizations involve movement in the anticipation of future emotions. These movie images include physical space, time, objects, people, and movement. The other important prerequisite for planning is inner dialogue. This term refers to the conversations that take place in our minds when we plan tasks or make decisions. It involves a mental dress rehearsal of sorts, where we might talk ourselves through the advantages and disadvantages of a plan A versus a plan B. Elementary students have likely seen cartoon or TV show characters visualize and think aloud when planning. However, they are also frequently asked to engage their mental movie screens throughout the school day. A teacher might ask students to describe what they pictured in their minds after listening to a story. Students might be asked to describe what their math assignment should look like before turning it in. Or they might be asked to simply describe what they will do in their free time after school. All of these examples include the mental movie screen and an inner dialogue. Secondary students likely use their mental movie screens and inner dialogue without even realizing it. Visualizing what the lawn looks like after it has been mowed in order to plan which direction to push the mower. Mentally walking themselves through an at-bat or a volleyball serve. Even mentally rehearsing asking a parent for an increase in allowance money. These planning prerequisites become increasingly more important when planning school tasks such as multi-step projects, assignments with due dates in the extended future, and balancing academics with extracurricular activities. Begin with the end in mind. The most important part of engaging in the planning process is to begin with the end in mind. When we begin with a mental image, a sketch, or an example of the end product, it is easier to identify necessary steps and needed supplies. Adults, teachers, and parents do this all the time. We just don't always talk it out. We see a picture on Pinterest that we want to recreate. We research the cost of a college education when deciding how much to add to a savings account each month. We imagine what an organized garage will look like, then work backwards to plan what needs to be done and which supplies to be purchased. Students at all levels benefit from beginning with the end in mind, or as we often tell younger learners, being future thinkers. Helpful questions to think about include, what will this look like when I am done? What will I look like when I am done? And how will I feel when I am done? This last question is especially important because motivation comes from being able to pre-imagine future emotions. Older students may be able to work through these questions verbally or even in their heads, where younger learners might benefit from a quick sketch to keep near them for motivation. Planning strategy, done, do, get ready. This planning strategy developed by Sarah Ward provides a concrete template for beginning with the end in mind and working backward for task completion. It's vital that students always begin with done by visualizing, writing down, or sketching the end product or result. Next, we move to do and outline the specific steps required to complete the task. Then comes get ready, in which we identify the needed materials, supplies, or resources for the task. 
Once we work backward to make the plan, we are ready to move forward and work the plan by gathering supplies and following the steps for completion. Very young learners can become quite independent with a wide variety of tasks when supported through this planning process. For example, by visualizing what she looks like when she goes outside to play in the snow, a kindergartner can work backward to gather and put on all of her snow gear independently. Once the routine has been practiced, parents can simply take a picture of the end result and ask the child to match the picture. Older students can use this strategy for the planning of almost any task. The same strategy can be applied to a science project, a five paragraph essay, resolving conflict with a peer or sibling, advocating for oneself, or even planning a Halloween costume. Older students are able to understand that the end result might be a poster for world history, or it might be making amends with a friend. The supplies or resources might be paper, pencils, or glue, but it could also be time to calm down, advice from a mentor, or finding a private location for a conversation. Parents can support students at home by scaffolding the planning process. To start, students may need prompts to engage their mental movie screens or begin with the end in mind. Once the foundations of effective planning are in place, parents can support students by asking about plans rather than making plans for them. One of the most effective strategies is simply to ask your child, what's your plan for that? 